Hi there, it's Bruce with Nature Calls, and today I'm going over backpacking's basic 10 essentials. And we've had a huge insurgence of day hikers and backpackers hitting our hills, and it seems like every weekend we get someone who's either lost or hurt up there that isn't properly prepared. So for the people that are just starting out and wanting to know how to build their equipment, how to break into this backpacking world um, and be prepared out there. This is what's called the Backpacking Basic 10 Essentials. This has been around for a long time. Um, I got this particular list off of REI, but most of the places like backcountry.com, they all have the same basic top 10 essentials and they're all the same. This is a little bit more modern updated one because there's more modern things like clothing and all that have come into the fray. What I'm going to do is go through each section and just briefly go over each one and later on we'll go more in depth on each one. But what I really want is for people to start building their equipment at a basic level and build from there. And so it'll be really great for the if you ever get lost or stranded up on the mountains and it's also great for the search and rescue teams to know that they've got someone that up there that might be able to survive uh, much better. So this is the backpacker thing. I know there's other survival lists. There's five C's and all that, but this is what's regarded as the, the basic uh, backpacking essentials, but really we want the hikers to, to have this type of equipment too. So the first thing that we have is called navigation. That's number one. And so before I ever go on a hike, I look up the trail that I'm going to go on online. There's always an online trail um, website or multiple trail websites where you can see the trail, you can see reports of the trail, uh, do all that pre-work beforehand, talk to people, then go and pick up a, a local map of the area. I got this one at REI. It's a green trails map. It's a, you want a map that has topographic features. Um, up here in the Cascades, we have um, lots of trees, so we can't do line of sight. We have lots of switchbacks, so we just can't compass walk and you know, um, hold a bearing. We're going back and forth and back and forth, so a topographical map is really important. But, uh, of course, learning how to read it. <laughs> but then a compass, um, your good old standard compass, is another necessity so pick up a compass and start learning how to use it and learning how it works with a map and so this is a normal normal compass and it's also a signaling device which is not in the basic 10 essentials but with this mirror you can signal a plane or whatever that's out in search and rescue on um, all my packs i at least have this little whistle which is another signaling device but it has a little button compass on it um, this has a thermometer, it has a magnifying glass for starting fires, but it's a, it's a compass and I compared it to my own, my, my good compass and all the other compasses to make sure I got the right one. We'll go more over that later. And this is a GPS unit and that's where this is more the modern updated thing because a lot of people I know use a GPS. Of course the big downfall is the batteries die out so you have to be prepared for that. But this is what I use uh, mainly on the trail is my GPS. So. It does a lot of really neat things. You can download it, look at your trail, but a GPS uh, is great. And then you can get apps for your phone. Um, I haven't really found those that reliable yet. I know some people have, so that's your navigation. Okay, the next thing you want is some type of uh, what's called sun protection. Up here we have a lot of rain, we have a lot of sun, or you might be out on a snow field and you don't want to um, get snow blindness. You don't want to be sunburned. Um, especially if you get stranded, it's very uncomfortable. You get dehydrated faster uh, just being in the sun. So a good pair of UV sunglasses. Um, nice little tube of sunscreen. And then chapstick. Um, definitely do with the chapstick too. This is SPF 25, which is a, a new one that I just got. Um, and you can use this for things from fire starting as well to uh, lubricating zippers to uh, you know, if you have chafe between your legs, there's lots of multi-use. That's uh, sun protection. Then there's also clothing these days, like my pants and the shirt. 
are both SPF um, 50. So these will protect me from the sun as well. A lot of the shirts that you can get are also SPF. A good hat um, to cover you, bandanas to cover your neck, depending on where you are. So that's the number two item. And number three is insulation. So you have your clothes, of course. Um, carry a beanie or a watch cap or a, or a wool hat or something. That, that's, you know, depending on the year, the time of year, and how far you're going, you know, at least have some type of head covering that's insulatory. Um, if it's just day hiking or it's warm out during the summer, you know, like a, a nice fleece that you can throw on. Um, you can have like a long underwear set in your in your um, your bag if that's the way you want to go. But have some type of extra insulation because when you stop, especially if you've been sweating, you're gonna start getting cold real fast. And if you're stranded overnight, you're gonna really want some type of uh, clothing. And it can be you know you can pare it down if you're just doing a day hike or you want to do super ultra lightweight. You can pare all this down, and we'll go over all that later. In number four, number four is. We call it illumination, and that comes down to light. My light of choice is a headlamp. I think headlamps are really the way to go. They've never failed me. Um, yes, they are battery power, but just like this one's rechargeable. Um, they last a long time if you've got them charged. Um, of course, there's flashlights, you know, nice little lightweight flashlights these days. They all take battery, so you have to account for that. Um, you can get other type of uh, like tent lantern type things like this um, little one here it's also a charger for cell phone or for GPS you can charge off it but it, you can use this as a light source and then at the very minimum having a like a snap light snap light it, it is not going to light up the whole trail it'll be some kind of light you can tie a string on it and wave it over your head for signaling um, at night that's the other interesting thing up here in Washington we our, our search and rescue do not go out at night so all the strobe effects that you can get on flashlights and, and doing things at night really is a waste of your time up here <laughs> but that's not in every part of the country and number five is first aid and there are like real minimum kits that like the through hikers do and a little baggie where they just have a few band-aids some moleskin uh, some duct tape you know, just real minimum in a, in a like a, a sandwich bag, or like one of these I got from a run that I had that has all those basics in it. It was free. Um, here's a little bit bigger one. It's a two day from from REI, and then here's one that I've been building myself. And this is for multiple people, multiple days. Um, and I've used everything in here. We'll go over that again. So have some type of first aid. Um, and uh, duct tape. We'll get more into that in a second. Okay, the next one, number six, is is fire. You know, be, have the ability to make a fire. Very minimum, I say, get a big lighter, and they are super reliable. There's a couple brothers that have been testing out a big lighter for the last year and a half, I think. They've left it out in the snow, in the rain, in the weather, out in the woods, and they keep going. And it always lights in the first light. So, to me, the big lighter has really been proven. Um, even if it gets wet, you, you know, you can, you can dry it out eventually, you know, after a little bit. I know there's electronic ones and all that, but this big lighter has really been proven and I've used it for years. And I have one in my pocket, I have one in my first aid kit, I have one in my cook kit, cook kit and I have another one. So I'm carrying four of these, these little ones, all the time. Uh, some people really like the matches and the waterproof deal. I've not really cared for these, but if you get the actual kind of storm matches, um, in a waterproof container. Uh, you can do flint and steel and ferro rods and all that. Uh, depends on how much you want to carry. Uh, most everybody I know carries a lighter. And then you want to have some type of way to help those things create a fire. My favorite item is uh, cotton balls and they're saturated with petroleum jelly and I keep them in a, in a little prescription bottle. Um, they just work great. And on the outside, I have some bike inner tubes cut up and wrapped around it, and some people call those ranger bands, and they, they, they light real well and, and will help you get a fire going. So that's fire. Okay, next is repair kit and tools. Um, I picked up this little like survival kit. I picked up this little survival kit 
at uh, a sporting goods store, and it has duct tape and sewing supplies and some basic, uh, like a tube to fix my tent and all those kind of things. It's a nice little repair kit. At the very minimum, you know, carry duct tape. Um, there's duct tape in there. I have duct tape on our trekking poles. This is about 15 feet of duct tape. You can use that for uh, for covering your blisters on your feet. You can cover uh, fill holes in your clothing, your tent, tarp, um, your sleeping pad. So some duct tape wrapped around a trekking pole. It's real easy. Um, then some type of, of uh, multi-tool. Um, like this is my one I use. It's a little Gerber dime. It's about as light as you can go. But you could definitely go bigger um, with like a Leatherman or Gerber type of tool. Um, they have knives on them. Um, but some type of, of tool like that is is highly highly recommended. Okay, the next is some type of extra food. So stashing away some food more than what you have. And some people say, you know, full days extra supply of food and with today's modern dehydrated foods it's real easy to just tuck something like that in there but I prefer things like these uh, power bars you know, high high protein power bars um, you know stash a few in there and these are above and beyond what you'd normally take or if you're just day hiking definitely take some power bars um, I always carry two with me as my extra now from food we go to water and hopefully you're carrying water um, you know, bottled water, bladder water, um, some some form of carrying water because you will get dehydrated and sweat a lot. What you can do is, if you need extra water, if you get stranded out there, um, like this is another little plastic bottle that I got for free at a run, and uh, along with my filter, like I, you know, the Sawyer filters or pump filters, um, at minimum, you know, I carry these little chemical taps, and so I fill these up with water put the tab in there half an hour later they're good so we'll go over those a lot more but some way to have filtered water and the last thing on um, the top 10 basic essentials is some type of shelter um, very minimum would be some type of raincoat this is like a little uh, plastic poncho that you can put over real small um, and then you can get like a little tarp it's a little five by seven tarp um, it's it's a plastic tarp. It's very you know it's it's okay. It'll it'll keep me for a night, um, as well as like a real heavy duty contractor trash bag. Um, you know they, they in a big huge huge winds you're gonna need a little bit more. But this but something like that. Um, what I carry now is these uh, S O L escape bivvies. They're like a big uh, Tyvek. Not sleeping bag, but paper sleeping bag uh, that's water waterproof and it has a heat reflector in it. Um, and you combine that or any of these with these emergency mylar blankets. They're really small. You can stash them in there, or just go ahead and get a tarp that you take with you on all your trips. Um, you know, they're this is actually the way I go. I love having a tarp with me. So those are the basic ten essentials. Of course, you can go well beyond that and and add lots of things signaling devices as we talked about earlier of course like things like bug spray um, your cell phone can also be beyond that but you know just first you know when you start building out your backpacking kit start with the basic 10 essentials and uh, it's a great place to start so we'll go on in each one of these categories but uh, get a minimal kit going together and uh, Go out and have some fun. All right. Thanks a lot, and I'll talk to you all later.